Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 109. Please turn to it, page 109, and today is our lesson number 59. We are in the process of solving problem dealing with absolute value. That's what, we've been, that's what we did yesterday and day before yesterday. And today we'll do the problem that you see there, on the bottom of the, at the bottom of the page there, the practice problem, number one. Practice problem. The first one. It says, solve the inequality and the inequality that is given to us is 8x minus 3 plus 4 we are told is greater than 2. Let's see what we can do, okay? Let's see what we can do. Well, the very first thing we need to do is to bring everything on this side that does not in, that is not inside the absolute value sign. Anything that is not in the absolute value sign has to be brought here immediately. So we need, in other words, we have to bring the 4 over here and we do so by subtracting 4 from both sides. So this is a positive 2. Subtract 4 from both sides, this positive 4 and negative 4 cancels out, which, is, which was the whole idea. And we end up with the absolute value of 8x minus 3. And here we end up with positive 2 and negative 4, which is negative 2. What do we notice? We notice that we have some quantity in the absolute value sign. We have some quantity in the absolute value sign, and we uh, and, and we are at the juncture where we are looking for the value of x. We are looking for the value of x such that this quantity is more than negative two, which of course, if you pause to think about it, is going to be true all the time. Because what does absolute value mean? Absolute value, absolute value. Absolute value of any quantity, any quantity, doesn't matter what it is, any quantity is more than zero, which is what absolute value means. Absolute value means that if, if the quantity happens to be negative, you ignore, ignore the negative sign. For example, absolute value of negative 37, absolute value of negative 37, 37 is positive 37. Absolute value of uh, negative 3 and 3 quarter, negative 3 quarter when you take the absolute value becomes positive 3 quarter and of course positive 3 quarter is more than 0. Absolute, that's what absolute value means. Absolute value means that you ignore the negative sign. Absolute value means we are simply interested in knowing how far is it from 0 regardless of the direction. Whether it's to the left of the 0 or whether it's to the right of the 0, we are not interested in that part. We just want to know how far away it is. That's what absolute value measures. Absolute values measure distances. And distances can never be negative. Think it in, think, if you want to understand absolute value on in intuitive ter ter terms, uh, absolute value, think of them as distances. That's exactly what they are. As absolute values are distances, if you like. And distances can never be negative. When was the last time you got in your car and drove negative 60 miles? It will be insane. Do you understand? Distances cannot be negative. Absolute value can never be negative. So what, whatever this quantity is, is some positive quantity, which means Regardless of what x is, that implies, this implies that regardless of what x is, 8x minus 3, 8x minus 3, this quantity, 8x minus 3, will always, will always, always, always be greater than negative 2. Will always be greater than negative 2. That's what it implies. Regardless of what x is, regardless of what x is, this quantity will always be greater than negative 2. Now, how do we write this thing in the language of mathematics? This part that we just wrote here is our answer. Regardless of what x is, 8x minus 3 will always be greater than negative 2. How do we write this in the language of mathematics? We're going to write that on top here. In the language of mathematics, we say, so I need the room, so I have to raise it. So this, this statement that we just wrote here, in the language of mathematics, we say, the solution to this problem is a set of is a set of all real numbers. 
set of all real numbers set of all real numbers is what the mathemat mathematicians would say which simply means which simply means in the in the in the common man's language it simply means this is what a set of all real number means x can be x can be whatever the hell it wants to be there are no limitation of x we are not saying that x has to be 8 or x has to be 9 or x has to be more than this or x has to be less than this x can be whatever the hell it wants to be regardless of what the value of x is when we put it in here even if this quantity turns out to be negative by the time we take the absolute value it will become positive and therefore by definition this quantity will always 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 be greater than more than will be greater than negative 2 and therefore the solution to this problem is set of all real numbers now what we're going to do now is we're going to actually i'm going to actually show it to you by giving you two or three examples i'm going to show it to you that regardless of what the value of x happens to be whether x happens to be positive or negative or fraction you will always see that this quantity will always be more than negative two let's do it here oh i left my t upstairs lost it okay i'll give you a second in case you need me to get out of your way very good let's do it then so what i'm going to do now what we're going to do now is put in some values for x and we'll see that regardless of what x happens to be the quantity that we have in the absolute sign 8x minus 3 will always be more than negative 2 for example if if uh, so quantity in the absolute sign that we have is 8x 8x minus 3 is what we have so if x happens to be if x happens to be negative 10 let's say if x happens to be negative 10 so what we find is 8 times negative 10 minus 3 you see 8x minus 3 8x minus 3 and then we take the absolute value of this which is 8 times negative 10 8 times negative 10 is negative 80 and a negative 80 and a negative 3 is negative 83 and by the time you take the absolute value of negative 83 it becomes it becomes positive 83 and of course it's more than negative 2 of course if x happens to be 5 if x happens to be 5, 8 times 5 minus 3, we take the absolute value of it. 8 times 5 is 40, 40 minus 3 is 37. Absolute value of 37, which, which is 37, and again it is more than negative 2. If x happens to be, if x happens to be, let's say, a fraction, if x happens to be, say, negative 3 8, negative 3 8, let's see what we get here. We get 8 times negative 3 8. 8 times x minus 3 minus 3 and we'll take an absolute value of it 8 is going to drop out and we end up with negative 3 and a negative 3 which is negative 6 negative 6 an absolute value of negative 6 is of course positive 6 and that is more than negative 2 as you can see it doesn't matter whether x is negative positive or fraction whether x is negative positive or fraction absolute value has to be more than zero which is why it is always going to be more than negative two hence the solution to this problem is set of all real numbers that's how mathematicians speak now the last point that i want to make i want to press upon you is that why do we have this set of all real number what the hell does it mean real number as opposed to what well real number as opposed to you see you and i the mere mortals we live in the world of real numbers but mathematicians live in two universes two universes they deal with what are known as real numbers which simply means number that you and i deal with one two three four five six all that and they also live in the world of imaginary numbers a set of numbers uh, we won't deal with it you will never see it on the exam only the engineers and mathematicians deal with something like that and those are called imaginary numbers don't worry about what those are it doesn't concern us you will never deal with it you will never have to deal with it especially in the field that you're going in uh, you won't have to deal with it you understand you will never have to give a, a, a patient a dose of negative 10 milligram. Uh, it's not going to, uh, rather, uh, imaginary 10 milligram. The, the numbers that we deal with are always going to be real numbers. But there, there does exist a universe of imaginary numbers. Hence, hence, we have to emphasize that the solution to this problem is set of all real numbers and not their imaginary numbers. Do you understand? That's what it is. As I said, you and I do not have to deal with it. Imaginary number is only something 
that uh, engineers and mathematicians deal with it. I did try it once my time myself, exactly. I wrote a check for my mortgage in imaginary numbers and uh, the bank didn't like it. So that's how I know it. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.